Good morning. I'm uh, making a video to about video or two about my current researches on temperature, and to do that, I'm making um, looking back at some earlier videos that I've I've worked on. This video is called Temperature of Thermosphere Question. Here's a a cr an interesting. Whoa! Did it go? Am I recording right now? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm recording. Anyway, throughout the troposphere, stratosphere, and mesosphere, there is a uh, a, a fairly low temperature. It's like the cool underbelly of the uh, of the atmospheric place, and then all of a sudden there's a jump in temperature up to 1,200 Kelvin, and it stays consistently around 1,200 Kelvin throughout that that place called the thermosphere. And my question was: Are the molecules at this height bouncing against each other thermally? or are they in low Earth orbit? Um, my current answer is probably both. The, uh, it's gonna, they're going to be obeying this law, and they're going to be obeying this law. But I should put a big question mark there. That, that's something that is either to be confirmed or rejected mathematically. But let's add a few other possibilities, um, or an, at least one more possibility. So the first possibility is bouncing each against each other thermally, or and the second one is in low Earth orbit, and and of course the third very obvious possibility is that there's ionization going on here, which make which heats it. And then this region here is a layer of insulation. which prevents the heat or prevents that heat from getting into here. Now, that kind of reveals an overall misconception in my own uh concept of how things work because because in my previous unstated assumption about all this, the uh the carbon carbon dioxide is keeping heat from escaping into space. Um, this kind of uh, changes that around quite a bit because it looks to me like the worry isn't that heat escapes into space, but rather that the heat from the thermosphere um, escapes into the atmosphere. So the actual concern is that the heat from the thermosphere gets into the Earth. Now there's going to be a perspective of this that the sunlight causes a hot thermosphere on one side and a cooler thermosphere on the other side. So there is that, but um, so really you're more concerned about the heat coming into the system from this side than we are about the heat coming into the system from that side. But in any case, in this region, in this region, greenhouse gases are going to affect how much sunlight is captured and Let me say that again, just in case it got paused. Uh, the greenhouse gases in this area affect how much sunlight is captured in this area, and so it would affect the temperature inside this insulated region where we live down here in the very lowest part of the troposphere. So if this um, insulating insulation barrier were to fail somehow, then this would just be 1200 Kelvin straight down, which is way, way higher than the approximately 300 Kelvin where it is down here. It's also interesting how this this graph ends way below 300 Kelvin. This graph looks to um, end quite slightly above 300 Kelvin. That's an important distinction. I kind of think this one might be more correct because at the other one seemed pretty cold. This 300 Kelvin is right around room temperature, or 27 degrees Celsius. Now that brings me to another question. In, in this thermosphere area, uh, we have sunlight coming in from the distance. I'll draw that in black because, of course, be, actually I'll draw it in blue, make it ultraviolet. Yeah. Okay, I should have used purple for ultraviolet, shouldn't I? 
Now, does this light have a temperature? Is the light is the temperature of this light 1200 Kelvin? I don't think so. I don't think that the temperature of that light can be defined. What it has is a it has a power per unit area and that power per unit area can be given sort of a temperature equivalence by using a sigma t to the fourth, but um, it's actually not a temperature in itself. It might be that this would be the temperature of the object which produced it, the black body that produced it. But what happens is it comes in here and heats all of the gas in the thermosphere to 1200 Kelvin. Um, how does it do it? Well, actually, it's maybe, uh, I think what hap the 1200 Kelvin comes from the average energy per molecule produced by the ionization of, well, it says here in Wikipedia that there's different ionizing layers. So in the D layer, it's ionization of Lyman series alpha hydrogen radiation at a wavelength of 121.5 nanometers. Let's just plug that number right into Wien's displacement law and get a temperature rela related to that um, wavelength. So that's going to be B, which is 2.89, 2 2.90 times 10 to the negative third divided by our wavelength, which is 121 0.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. So that is a Wien's law temperature of 23,000 Kelvin if that, if that temperature um, was predominant in the region. But it's not predominant, it's just a... Um, if you had a black body spectrum that had 121.5 nanometers as its peak frequency, that would be uh, 23,000 Kelvin black body. But uh, this, isn't, this isn't a black body, this is just a single spectral line at 121.3 nanometers. So, uh, but it is producing the energy that, or what, what happens is the light comes in, it's absorbed it comes in from the sun, and then that that light is scattered in all directions. Um, uh, that light isn't actually scattered; it's absorbed, and then the uh, hydrogen atom emits things in Lyman series, bomb, bomber series. So this is um, this is the Lyman series uh, region that it's gonna it's gonna pop up to there. And then where can it go from there? There's really only one place it can can go from there, back down again. When it goes down again, that um, it's going to emit some light at 122 nanometers. But it might be that 122 nanometer light might be absorbed by something else that can catch it in a that can catch it in some other uh, wavelength. But I think that's a, a a large part of what's going on in this region is that the uh, that whatever light is coming in from the sun is being captured by uh, that D series, this D layer of the uh, of the ionosphere. Let's go ahead and look at the E layer here. Um, the E layer ionization is due to soft X-ray, 1 to 10 nanometers. Now compare that to the 121.3. Let's see, let's look at what the temperatures would be with 1 to 10. So for, 10, for 1 nanometer, the temperature is 2.9 divided by 1 E, 2.9 times 10 to the negative third, divided by 1 times 10 to the negative ninth which matches a Wien's law temperature of 2.9 million Kelvin. Again, with the caveat that this is just a single um, spectral line, it is not going to actually represent a black body spectrum. But there is enough energy in that to produce really, 
you know, to kind of um, settle down, simmer down into a a nice hot mix. Now we could also divide by one e 10 nanometers, and the 10 nanometer line would be 290,000 uh, Kelvin. So still quite a bit higher than that 23,000 Kelvin there. So um, what about the F layer? The F layer extends about from about 200 to more than 500 kilometers above the Earth surface of the Earth. That's really tall, high. It's the densest point of the ion ionosphere, which means which implies that signals penetrating this layer will escape into space. I want to compare that to the Van Allen belts because let's see if the uh, the Van Allen belts extend from 1,000 to 60,000 kilometers above the surface, while um, the F layer extends from 200 kilometers to more than 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So the Van Allen belts start way above this, 200 kilometers. So in, anyway, the F layer is going to absorb, um, or it's going to ionize things at 10 to 100 nanometers, which is um, 290,000 Kelvin uh, to, I mean, these aren't quite accurate but to 29,000 Kelvin. In any case, this ionization and the E layer ionization, I think, is what keeps the entire thing hot. And then the D layer ionization um, may be, right, may, looks like it occurs somewhere in here where this insulating layer is. But in any case, there's a big insulation layer between us and where all of that ionization is going on. So basically, the ionosphere um, turns that extremely dangerous light from the sun into a, uh, a mix of 1,200 Kelvin gas. Then, as you're coming through the insulation layer, um, you have that basically that temperature is held at bay by all of this and then finally down here you have the region where we live which is relatively cool compared to the surface of the atmosphere and uh, because of this insulation we're relatively stable uh, even even if there's pretty pretty fairly big fluctuations here um, this insulation is going to protect us um, from from solar wind and stuff like that, and uh, what we need to con what we're concerned about with the carbon dioxide and is is that if we kind of darken this region, then more of the light that comes more of the visible light that reaches us is going to be absorbed on the way out uh, and actually heat up this internal area internal region here.